What's up everyone? This is James at King's Ride Shop and today we're going to unbox and open up a brand new set of the Colt Crew Match Cassette Wheels and I'll even show you how to make the rear one switch from right to left hand drive, vice versa, either way you want to go. But I'll give you the quick rundown. Oh, let's start with the rear. Ooh, look at this. First thing you'll notice is Colt likes to provide a Colt carabiner um, keychain slash spoke wrench on there. It's pretty cool. This is like a super high quality wheel. You have a double wall center truss rim. So basically the a double wall rim is pretty simple. It has two walls of metal. There's an inside wall and then an outside wall. And you can always tell because the spoke nipple is always recessed. Now what makes these rims more expensive than other rims would be the type of alloy they're made out of, a hardened aluminum, and also that they're welded at the seam. So the rim is made and then they have to put the rim together. The seam will always be located directly across from the valve stem hole. And you can see this one, the seam is welded together as opposed to pinned. There's some other like ways they join them, sleeved rim, pinned rim, or a welded rim. Welded is the, the strongest way to make the joint. And um, so Colt has these rims welded. It makes really nice. They grind the weld smooth so it looks clean. You can't tell it was welded, um, but it'll always be across from the valve stem hole. The other thing is you can tell this rim was laced up properly. Sometimes you get these complete wheels and they're not laced up right. The easiest way to tell is um, the valve stem hole is right here and it should always be in this open area of the spokes. If it's right here or in these closed areas, it makes it really hard to pump your tire up. Uh, you know, the pump head gets in, the, the spokes get in the way of the pump head. So this open area makes it nice. This is a 36 hole rim, so you got 36 spokes three cross each spoke crosses three spokes um, which for the weight to strength ratio that's probably the way to go the hub is sealed bearing aluminum hub shell chromoly driver this hub is really cool um, because you can make it left or right hand drive so you can change it up if you want to switch drive sides the other thing i like about this hub 14 mil axle but it also comes with steel axle nuts um, some wheels come with aluminum axle nuts. I'm not a fan of aluminum axle nuts. When you put your peg on or your plastic hub guard, you crank the axle nut super tight to keep it from moving or slipping when you ride. And if it's aluminum, sometimes it pulls the thread, kind of makes the thread a little rough on the axle. And that's when you go to take your wheel off and the axle keeps spinning and you're trying to hold the other side and it just makes it a headache. It's because that aluminum axle nut's dragging on the threads to come off. You don't get that problem with steel axle nuts. So if you're gonna buy a wheel, I would just check and make sure it comes with hardened steel axle nuts. I think it's better. Um, I like it more. This hub also comes with a non-drive side hub guard. It's plastic, it's hardened, it lasts a super long time, but if you do wear it out, we sell a replacement hub guard for it too. It's really cheap and affordable. So that's a cool feature right there. The male axle, it may not look as clean as a female axle, but the 14 mil male axle seems to be a lot stronger if you're running pegs and doing a lot of grinds. So I'd recommend getting the uh, 14 mil male. The other thing I'm gonna show you is how we can make this left-hand drive. Right now you can see it drives right. Um, so what you can do to make it drive left is this jam lock nut sleeve comes off now the bushing came off too which is this piece in the middle when i pulled it off which is okay that's what the driver spins on the driver is a bushing driver so you slide the driver out that slides off and then you slide this off you can see the bushing which is that bronzy looking piece and that's what it spins on. They're really durable, they last a really long time, and they don't blow out like bearings do. You can see this driver works by these paws compressing on the springs. And as the paws compress on the springs, they're compressing because they're sliding over these teeth that are inside the hub shell. There's a ring of teeth, and one side they're ramped, and the other side they're blunt. The ramped side pushes the paw down, 
The blunt side connects with the paw and drives the wheel forward when you pedal. To make this left hand drive, it's pretty simple. First, you gotta wipe the grease off, which don't worry too much about the grease. I'm not a huge fan of putting a lot of grease on a cassette paws. And um, the reason being is the grease can get a little thicker sometimes and instead of making it smooth, it makes the paws stick. And sometimes they'll stick down and then the, the paws will slip past the teeth. Clean some of the grease off. We have to pull out this other sleeve the bushing rides on. So those two connect to each other inside here. And on the inside, you will see there is a plastic little washer on the driver. So you set that to the side on the sleeve. You have the paws and the springs. And on this driver, you can see it says left and right, or actually L and R, and it shows you which way each paw should point to make it go left or right. So if we're gonna make it left, we're gonna flip this. So you just grab it, the paw, and you slide it up out of there. You kind of push it down to slide it, it pops out. Do your best to not do this over some sand or something. If you drop the paw, it'll disappear forever. So make sure you do it over a solid surface or a workbench. It slides up and out of the driver. And then you do the same thing with the spring next to it. And we're not editing this part, so this is the real struggle right here. So there's the spring. It's like a little flat piece of metal bent over. And you just put it in the other side so it matches. Right now it's set up for right hand, so we want to make this set up for left hand. So we flip the spring to the other side and mirror it from how we took it off. And you got to do it four times. You just keep going. So we got all the paws facing the left way. The teeth are flipped. Everything's good to go. You take it, you slide it back onto the axle, give it a spin in the ratcheting direction, and it should pop back in there. And that's it. And now, left hand drive. Pretty simple, super cool, and uh, it is durable. So now we gotta move on to the front wheel.